Hello everyone. In the series of learning database management system, today we are going to see full functional dependency and partial functional dependency. In the previous series, we have already discussed what is functional dependency, what is trivial, non-trivial functional dependency and how to calculate the closure of attribute. So here we are going to do full functional dependency and partial functional dependency. So understand the definition. A functional dependency, if we are writing x determines y, is full functional dependency if removal of any attribute from x means that the dependency does not hold anymore. So let's understand this with example so this de definition will be clear to you. Let us suppose I am having a functional dependency something like this. That there are three elements P, Q and R. And this P, Q, R are determinant and they determine another attribute which is T. So how we will say that P, Q, R determines T or T is functionally dependent on P, Q, R. If we will say that T is fully functionally dependent on P, Q, R if it cannot be determined by any subset of P, Q, R means there should not be any dependency something like PQ determines T, this should not be there. QR determines T, this should not be there. Then alone Q determines T, this should not be there. P determines T, this should not be there. Or R determines T, this should not be there. So any subset of PQR is not allowed to determine T alone. Only with PQR, with this combination only, we will be able to determine T. Then we will say that T is fully functionally dependent on PQR. So what is the definition is saying? Understand again, a functional dependency X determines Y is fully functional, de uh, functional dependency if removal of any attribute from x, if I will remove any attribute from this side, then this dependency does not hold. Means with any of the subset, I am not able to find this t again. Only if I am having all the attribute p, q, r combination together, then only I will be able to find this attribute. Now, understand like this with the example that let us suppose for for an Aadhaar card, I need a person's name, I need a person's address and I need a unique biometric ID. So I am writing a unique biometric ID. These three things I need to give Aadhaar number to a person. So, Aadhaar number is functionally dependent on these three things. Now, if the person is only coming with a name, that my name is this, give me Aadhaar number. We are not supposed to give Aadhaar number to that person. If there is only address or there is address and unique ID, but we don't know about the name of the person, then also we cannot give Aadhaar number to the person. So when I am having a combination of this, that name is there, address is there and unique biometric ID is there, then only I will be able to give the Aadhaar number. And if I will remove any of the attribute from this side, from the determinant side, this dependency will not hold. Then this, this kind of dependency here we can say that Aadhaar number is fully functionally dependent on name address and unique biometric id then only this fu functional dependency is full functional dependency now understand partial functional dependency a functional dependency x determines y is partial dependency if some attribute a in x can be removed from x and then the dependency still holds so what we are saying, let us suppose I'm having something like this, that 
AC determines P. Now I am having another dependency A determines D and D determines P. Now if you can see you we, uh, we have already taught you how to compute closure. If I compute closure of A then what will happen how I should compute the closure yesterday means one lecture I have uploaded yesterday where I have told you two steps to calculate the closure. So first step is we have to write in the result set whatever attribute is given to me to calculate closure. So A is given to me so I am writing A here. Next which are dependent on this attribute those attribute we should mention and this we have to do repetitively. So repetitively we will um, add the attributes which are dependent on the result with on the attribute which is present on the result set so here i am writing a now if you can see the dependency a determines d so d is also coming here now repetitively we have to do this on d any dependency on d p is dependent so next i will write p so if you can see if i am calculating the closure of a a alone has the power to determine p a doesn't need C. So this means what? The subset of this determinant that is A alone is able to find out P. So this kind of dependency is known as partial dependency. Just see with the example again. Uh, let us suppose I am having name and ID of a student. And I am saying that name and ID determines in which course that student is studying. So name and ID determines course or we are saying course is dependent on name and ID. Now further if I am checking there is a dependency which says with ID also I can tell course of the student. We don't need name. ID is also unique and alone ID can determine course. Then what is happening? Subset of this name comma ID is ID. So subset of determinant is able to determine the dependent alone. So this kind of dependency is known as partial dependency. Fine. So just a quick revision and a point to remember for dependency. We have seen functional dependency. Functional dependency here two points you should remember for full functional dependency if there is a dependency like this that x determines y then y is y should be functionally dependent on x and y is not functionally dependent on any subset of x if it is not dependent on any subset of x then y is fully functionally dependent on x now partial functional dependency y is functionally dependent on x it's same point next point is y can be determined by any subset of x if this is there it is partially fu functional dependency so i hope functional dependency full functional dependency partial functional dependency these concepts are clear to you thank you very much